Hello guys, welcome to Rhino Venue, an informative channel of Assam. In this video, we will get a brief overview about the tribes of Assam. Ever since the very beginning of the history, the tribal have always been an integral and important part of Assam. With its magnificent and varied tradition and customs, it has been successfully revealing the very essence and synthesis of Assam and the people of Assam. There can be no doubt, without the wide contribution of the tribals, Assam would not have been so rich in cultural life as well as in social economic setup. According to the census of 2001, Assam has a much higher proportion of tribal population than that of the country as a whole. The tribal population of Assam can be widely divided into hill tribes and plain tribes. Dimahasao district has the highest proportion, about 68% of tribal population, followed by Karbianglong, Dhemaji, Kukrajhar, Lakhimpur, Nolbari, Goalpara, Dorong, Morigao, Bongaigao, and Golaghat. The remaining districts have proportion of tribal population less than the national norm. According to the list of scheduled tribes in Indian constitution, there are 23 tribes in Assam. 14 hill tribes and 9 plain tribes. The 14 hill tribes are Sakma, Dimasa, Garo, Hajong, Mar, Khasi, Jayantia, Lakhir, Man, Karbi, Paui, Sinteng, Kuki, Mijo, and Naga. And the 9 plain tribes are Burman, Boro, Dewri, Hojai, Sunwalkosari, Tiwa, Mes, Missing, and Rava. It is not possible to brief all the tribes in this video. We have tried here to give a little information about some of them including the 9 major tribes of Assam that is Boro, Missing, Karbi, Garo, Ravha, Dimasa, Tiwa, Dewri, and Sunwal Gosari. Besides all these there are also various Kuki and Thai speaking tribes in hill districts as well as in the upper Assam area. Now we are going to talk about Boro tribe but before we begin, let's enjoy. Now let's talk about Boros. The Boro of Assam are Mongoloid origin and reside in the district of Kokrajhar, Sirang, Baksa, Golpara, Nolbari, Kamrup, Udalguri, a portion of Dorong, and in the two hills district. According to the some scholars, the Boro were the first agriculture nomad who have entered this part of the world and introduced irrigation. Besides, it was the Boro who introduced sericulture in Assam. The Boro village is a self-sufficient unit. It is said that India has received the technique of weaving and embroidery from Indo-Mongoloid in Assam. The Boros were decidedly the pioneers in this respect. The domestic animals of the Boros agriculture are principally confirmed to common cattle and pigs. A Boro house is seldom distinguishable from the Assamese houses. The house is usually two roof affair erected on the ground with scanty ventilation. The house is consist of two rooms, a cowshed and a granary. The family rooms are generally placed on the backyard facing the orchards. 
Agriculture is the main occupation of boroughs. The borough women rear all kind of silkworm. Many borough people work in the forest as badari which means team of logging labor engaged by the forest contractors. And a few families of northern Dorong work as a tea garden labor to supplement their family income. In Borokozari village, the villagers own a common landed property as a granary. At time of distress, the individual families can fall back on the assistance of these common properties. In the 14th century, under the patronage of Boro King Mahamanikya, the great Assamese scholar Madhab Kandrali translated the original Sanskrit Ramayana into Assamese language. Towards the later part of the 18th century, the Boro had fallen so swiftly on the slide of history that for more than a century, the Boro were left in a complete oblivion. In due course of time, the assimilation of the group with the rest of Assamese population considerably emaciated the size of the Boro population. The Boros have a very powerful language of their own. The Boro language in the course of time spread over a large area right from Sadia in eastern Assam to Tripura. West Bengal and Nepal in the west and passed through very many geographic strains and ramfiled into the different regional dialects. There are still a scattered Boro population in Nepal. As regards costumes, there is wide gap between that used by the Boros, living at the foot of the wooden hills and the one used by the Boro of other locations. Women of the former group wear only one unseen piece wrapped in more than one fold through the whole length of the body, while the latter wear a mekela encycling the body from the breast line down to little above the hills. Married women add another piece of cover body above the breast line. Occasionally they wear black petticoat which they dye with the leaves of either guava or blackberry. The two-piece dress of Riha Mekela worn by Assamese woman is believed to be later form of the original dress of the Borho woman. Marriage by negotiation is generally practiced by the tribe. A Boro youth can be earn a bride by serving in her family. The Boro generally follow exogamy. Sororal polygamy was widely practiced at one time among the tribe. It is not a rarity even at the present time. The Boro are very rich in classical music. Nowadays, the modern music has also become popular among Boros. Their contribution to the music of Assam is very significant. There are also reference to Boro classical music as per excellence in Yuen Sang's accounts of his travels in Kamrupa. The Boro dance Dodini Mochanai gave rise to Deodhani Nitya prevalent in Assam. The dance of Dodini, the oracle-like dancer in the festival of Kherai, means the symbol of Shakti. In the point of rhythm's pause, movement and clarity of appeal, the Boro classical dance have close similarities with the classical dances of northeastern India. Boro musical instruments like Sifang, also called Swifin, which is a flute, Kham is a great drum, Jotha is a cymbal, Serja is a type of violin, and Hontara is a dhotara which uh, have enriched the music and dance of Boros. The functions of male oracle and female oracle as priestly dancers of the time of Batho worship and the national Kherai festivals are essential requisites. Male oracle is known as Deodhai and female oracle is known as Deodhani. The rhyming meters of Boro verses and songs always appeal to the reader's ear and heart. The themes and beauties of Boro music and dance reveal their mood of life and attitude towards nature. Their primal god is Bato or Sibrai. It is represented by a Sizu plant. According to some scholars, Assamese Bihu festival had their origins in the Boro spring festival. Now let's talk about Chutias. Chutias are one of the ancient inhabitants of the state reside mainly along the bank of rivers Wonhiri and the Assam or Natural border near Sadia. In the early part of the 13th century, when the foundation of Ahom Kingdom was laid at Sipsagar, the whole expanse to the east of Suvansiri and Disang in the north bank Brahmaputra was under the Chutia Kingdom. After being defeated by the Ahoms, 
the Jutia community mingle with the border surroundings. Now they are mainly concentrated in Lakhimpur, Sipsagar, Dibrugar, and Dorong districts. After conquering the Jutia kingdom, the Ahom appointed a few prominent Jutias as important officials in the king's court and established marital ties with them. After coming with the Ahoms, four broad divisions developed in the Jutia community over time, namely Hindu Jutia, Ahom Jutia, Borahi, and Devri. The Chutias were and are the worshippers of Kesaikhati Kosoni. Earlier, human offerings were made in the puja of the goddess. Now we are going to discuss about Burman Kosaris, but before we begin, let's enjoy this Burman song. Now let's talk about the Burmans. The Burmans are Kosaris of the Kasar district who follow Hindu religion. The Burmans identified themselves as Shatriyas but they are actually a group of Dimasas. They came down to the plains, began living with non-tribal and adopted some of the traits of Hindu priestly class. They gave up some of their old habits such as eating pigs, rearing foals and speaking their own Dimasa language. However, although they fought from the original Dimasa group, yet they did retain some of the basic culture. The Burman village are situated generally by the side of the hills. They mostly establish their village on the river banks. The villages are mostly homogeneous, that is inhabited by Burmans only. The villages subsist on agriculture. Weaving is a household industry of the Burmans. Although agriculture is the main occupation of the Burmans, Yet the state of the agriculture is in poor shape owing the lack of necessary input and modern know-how. Ever since they adopt Hinduism, the Burmans have discarded many of their old religious festivals excepting one, the Daini Puja. The Puja is worshipped with Hindu rituals. The Burmans have borrowed their god and goddesses from the Bengali Hindus. Their marriage and funeral are governed by the Hindu rites. Now let's enjoy this Dimasa song.
Now let's talk about Dimasas. Dimasas are the tribal people of northeastern part of India. They live in Assam, Nagaland and its nearby areas. They are a branch of Boro tribes. Now they are mainly in North Kerala Hills, Silsar subdivision, plain of Kirby Anglong, Nagao district, Twinsang and Dimapur of Nagaland and Dansari areas. The Dimasas re-established their capital at Dimapur in near about 1086. And in 1536, they left Dimapur and re-established their kingdom at Maibang. In 1745, the Dimasa's capital was shifted to Kashpur, and in 1932, their kingdom became a part of British Empire. There are separate clans for male and female in Dimasa society. At present, there are 40 male clans and 42 female clan. Male clan is known as Sakong, and female clan is known as Zulu. Marriage is prohibited within the same clan. A priest is not needed to solemnize the Dimasa marriage ceremony. They get property according to the law of inheritance. The son get the paternal properties and the daughter get the maternal assets. There is a custom not to mix up maternal properties with paternal properties. If there is no daughter in a family, the maternal property will go to can relative female of the mother, but not to her son. Same law is applicable in the case of paternal properties too. They have their own religious faith. They worship their own god and forefathers. Their priests are called Jontai and the main priest is called Jishia. Like the Deodhais of Ahom, there is a class of people in Dimasa society to who are believed to be the grace of supernatural and divine power. They call Patri. They can foresee the past, present and future and carry the divine message for all. In 1813, Dimasa king Krishna Sandra converted himself into a Hindu. From that time onward, Hindu religious customs entered into their society. Their main occupation is agriculture and buffalo rearing. They follow the customs of jhum cultivation. Their main agricultural product are cotton wool, mustard, and sesame seed. Males make artifacts of cane and bamboo. Females make cloths in their handloom. There is a youth organization of boys and girls in Dimasa society to work in a cooperative system which is called Hangdao. Dimasas have their own traditional dresses which they make themselves. They also have a dialect. Many words from the original Dimasa dialect are incorporated in Assamese language on the process of its formation. The art and architecture of Dimasa people are very much developed. The ancient relics found in Dimapur, Maibang, and Kashpur are examples of their artistic and architectural excellence. Now let's see a the review song. <laughs> Now let's head out dairies. The dairies are a branch of Chutias which are belong to the Boro race. The dairy are one of the four divisions of Chutias who resigned Eastern Assam prior to the advent of the Ahoms. The dairies were the priests of Chutias. At present, the dairy is mainly found in Lakhimpur and Sipsagar district. They are bilingual and speak both Assamese and dairy language. Dairies villages are generally found in river and areas hang fertile edible land. The houses are constructed on a bamboo platform raised about the 5 feet above the ground and they faced east to west direction with the doors opening to the east. Agriculture is the main source of income of the dairies and in many dairy villages there are traditional community weaving centers of the girls. 
Dairies belonging to the Tengaponia subclan do not take mutton or flesh of the god as it's forbidden according to the legend of the clan. They prefer rice beer to water even while quenching thirst. The dairies attach much importance and mystery to their religion. Their priests are Bordeuri, Horudeuri, Borvorali, and Horvorali only. The term dairy appear to be a letter coinage derived from Deva, which means a god. The dairies observe Bihu during the month of Bohag. They also celebrate Mag Bihu. The dairies have Devdhani who predict about the prosperity or melody of the village through the oracle. Due to long duration of time, we have segregated the topic into two parts. So far, we have discussed about the five major tribes of Assam, that is Burmans, Boros, Chutias, Dimasas, and Dairies. Second part link given in the description. For more updates, subscribe to our channel, Rhino Venue. Thanks for staying with us.